Hey folks, uh, this lesson is representing linear non-proportional relationships. So we've done linear proportional relationships. It just means it doesn't go through the origin when it's non-proportional. It's still linear. still makes a line. Linear means, means a line. So our question here is uh, how can we use tables and graphs and equations to represent linear uh, equations that are non-proportional? Okay, so that just means they don't go through the origin. We'll talk about that as we go through this lesson. So uh, we can use an equation to describe the relationship between two quantities of a real-world situation. We can use a table to show values to, uh, that make the equation true. So here's an example. So the equation y equals 3x plus 2 gives the total charge for one person, which is y. Our y values are the total charges for renting a pair of shoes and bowling x number of games at the Corkwood Bowling Lane based on the prices shown. So make a table of values for this situation. Okay, so x are the number of games. So let's make some x values that make sense. How many games can we play? Well, we can play, you know, one game or two game or three game or four or five or six. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and plug those in. We're going to plug uh, x equals one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to plug those in right there. So y equals three times all of these and then we'll add 2 at the end so, so we got to multiply first okay so let's go ahead and do that so 3 times 1 is 3 3 plus 2 is 5 okay and then 3 times 2 is 6 6 plus 2 is 8 uh, 3 times 3 is 9 and 9 plus 2 is 11 and then finally we get 3 times 4 12 plus 2 is 14 I want you to recognize this your book hasn't suggested that yet but look at these these are going up plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus that number right there okay that's how much it always goes up okay alright so um, uh, so we made that table so Frank makes twelve dollars per hour doing part-time work on Saturdays he spends four dollars on transportation to and from work so the equation y equals 12x minus 4 gives his earnings, which is y. So y is his earnings after the transportation cost each day. So that minus 4 for working x number of hours. Okay, so make a table of values in this situation. Okay, so let's use some x values that make sense. So um, we're going to choose those. Now he can work more hours, but we'll start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug in those right here. Whoops, I forgot to do something. We're going to plug those in right here next to the x. So 12 times 1 minus 4, 12 times 2 minus 4, 12 times all of these numbers minus 4. And that's going to give us uh, y, which is his represents his earnings in dollars. Okay, so here we go. Let's plug those in right there to find the corresponding y values. All right. Okay, so 12 times 1 is 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. So we'll plug that in. Okay, 12 times 2. I'm looking right here. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 minus 4 gets us 20. Okay, and then 12 times 5. I'm sorry, 12 times 3. 12 times 3 is 36. 36 minus 4 is 32. Okay, 48 is 12 times 4. So 48 minus 4 is going to get us 44. Finally, 12 times 5 is, I know 6 times 5 is 30. So 12 times 5 is double 30, which is 60. 60 minus 4 gets us 56. Okay, now again, your book doesn't have you recognize this until later. But look at this, 8 plus 12 is 20, 20 plus 12 is 32, 32 plus 12, 44 plus 12. It's always plus that, um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get uh, that so it appears first. So uh, let me get that going. So it's always good if it's going to add that much every time. We just got to see where's the starting point right there. So uh, it's a good way to check your answers as you're working on that. Okay, so let's examine some linear relationships. So recall that a proportional relationship is a relationship between two quantities in which the ratio of one quantity to the other quantity is constant. Okay, I know that doesn't make sense. That just means it's a straight line and it goes through the origin. Okay, the graph of a proportional relationship is a line that just goes through the origin. So when the ratios between quantities are not constant, they can still be linear, 
uh, but not proportional, which just means it does not go through the origin, okay? So here's one right here. So the entrance fee for slide mountain uh, water slides is $20. Okay, so you cost $20 just to get in, and visitors purchase additional tickets, $2 for rides, games, and foods. So here's the equation that represents this. Y equals 2x plus 20 gives us the total cost of Y to visit the park, uh, including how many tickets you've purchased right there. Okay, let me just slide that up. Okay, so they're giving us the number of tickets. So like there might be some, um, some adults that go there and they don't need tickets. They're just there to kind of make sure that their kids are safe and just babysitting the kids there. So they don't buy any tickets. So, But um, uh, you could buy one ticket, two ticket, three ticket. They're giving us uh, the ticket numbers of 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So we're going to plug those values in right here. So we'll plug in 0, then 2, then 4, then 6, then 8. Okay. Now watch, they're going to jump up by $2 every time. We No, they're not. Uh, that's when this jumps up by 1. So I take that back. I'll talk about that in a second. So y equals 2 times 2 plus 20, 2 times 4 plus 20, 2 times 6 plus 20, and finally 2 times 8 plus 20. Okay, so <clears throat> 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 20 is 24. So that's what we're going to plug in right there. And here, if we just did 0 right here, 2 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 20 is 20. So it costs $20 to get into the park without buying any tickets. So if we bought two tickets, it's going to cost $24. If we bought four tickets, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 20 is 28. So if we bought four tickets, the price would be 28. Okay? 2 times 6 is 12. 12 plus 20 is 32. So that one's going to be 32. All right, finally, 2 times 8 is 16. 16 plus 20 is 36. That's what goes there. Okay, so there's our, our table that we, um, uh, we did for that uh, slide mountain there. And then now what we're going to do is, is take that table of values and place the ordered pairs from the table on the graph and describe the shape of the graph, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and plot over 0, up 20. So over 0, up 20. So these are going by 4s. So there's um, uh, 12, 16. So right there, I'm going to put a point right there over 2 up 24 so over 2 up 24 okay over 4 up 28 over 4 up 28 I think that's it we're just gonna keep plugging those points in right there okay so find the rate of change between each point and the next okay is this rate constant okay all right so oh, it says describe the shape also so this it looks like they're lying on a nice straight line and they are that's a linear equation so find the rate of change it's two dollars per ticket and is it constant yeah it's always two dollars per ticket right there so calculate the rate of change for the values in the table explain why the relationship between the number of tickets uh, and the total cost is not proportional. Okay, so the rate of change is, is 2. It's that number that's always in front of x. Remember, it's y equals mx plus b. So whatever that number is, that's your rate of change. That's your slope. Okay, and it's not proportional because the line does not go through the origin. If we just had like y equals 2x without the 20, then it would be proportional. But y equals 2x plus 20 takes it off the origin, so it's not proportional. It's just a word, you guys. Proportional just means a line that goes through the origin. And if it's a line that doesn't go through the origin, then it's a non-proportional linear relationship. A lot of big words. All right, so would it be possible to add more points to the graph from x equals 0 to x equals 10? Um, well, yeah, we don't have to buy even number of tickets. We could um, add the points uh, one ticket, which would cost 22, three tickets, which would cost 26, and so on. So we don't have to buy zero tickets or two, four, six, or eight or tickets. We can buy an odd number of tickets also. So um, uh, would it make sense to connect those points with a line? Okay, well, the answer is no. Because if we graph the line, we're including all the numbers, which means all the decimals. And we can't buy a decimal of a ticket. We can't buy like 2.35 tickets. It's either two tickets or three tickets, okay? So we only have whole numbers for the ticket sales on that, okay? All right. So our linear equation is an equation whose solutions are ordered pairs that form a line when they're graphed in a coordinate plane. Linear equations can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. 
and if b is not zero then it is called non-proportional but it is still linear okay so if it was just y equals mx or y equals mx plus zero then it would be a proportional relationship okay all right so here's an example the diameter of a Douglas fir tree is 10 inches when measured at its uh, at uh, at someone's chest height so uh, over the next 50 years the diameter is expected to increase an average of a rate of two-fifths inch per year so the equation y equals two-fifths x plus 10 that plus 10 is that starting time of or starting uh, uh, diameter of 10 inches gives y which is the diameter of the trees after x years so draw a graph of the equation and, and describe the relationship. Okay, so they gave us this table, and all they did, and they told us what the values were, but if we plugged in zero right here, two-fifths times zero is zero, zero plus 10 is 10. That means it's zero years. Started off with 10-inch diameter right there. After 10 years, okay, so if we put a 10 right there, then five would go into 10 um, uh, two times, and two times two is four. Four plus 10 gets us that 14. Yeah, I'll do one more. I'll do the 50. We put in 50 right there. 5 goes into 10. I'm sorry, 5 goes into 50 10 times. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 plus 10 would give us that 30 right there. But they gave all of this to us right there. Okay, so we're going to draw the graph of the equation and then describe the relationship. So we're going to go ahead and draw this graph right here. So over 0, up 10, over 10, up 14, and so on. So they give us this graph right here. We're going to plot those ordered pairs and then draw a line connecting them. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go over 0, up 10. So I'm going to graph this one first. So over 0, up 10. These are going by 4s. So if that's 8, that's 12. So 10's right there. Okay, so there's that right there okay we'll go over 10 up 14 so over 10 up here's 4 8 here's 12 so 14 would be right there okay so over 10 up 14 the next one is over 20 up 18 and over 30 up 22 over 50 I don't know why they jumped from 30 to 50 but they did they gave us those numbers and then it says plot them and then draw a line connecting them. So there's a line that connects them right there. Okay, um, just following the direction. So the relationship is a linear relationship, but it's non-proportional because it's a line. That's what linear means uh, that doesn't go through the origin. If it was going through the origin, it would be proportional, but this one doesn't. So it's a non-proportional linear relationship. Okay, so why can a line be drawn connecting the points of the tree example? but not in the explore activity. Well, I had to go back and see what the explore activity was. It was that slide mountain right there where X represented the number of tickets right there. Well, we can't buy, you know, a point uh, decimal of a ticket right there, so we only can buy whole numbers, so we connect, can't connect them. But a tree grows over and over. I mean, it keeps growing. It doesn't, it, it'll grow all the way from, you know, it'll grow from, um, uh, if this is five years, it, it'll grow two and a half years. So two and a half years would be something like right there, okay? Whatever that is right there. So a tree continuously grows. That's why we connect the dots right there. But on, um, on the, the, the Slide Mountain Park, um, tickets are only sold in whole number increments, okay? And trees always grow, so that's why we can connect a line. Okay, so make a table uh, and graph the solutions of this equation. So they give us this table. We could choose other x values if we wanted to, but they gave us those x values, so we'll plug those in right there. And then we're going to connect them, okay? So if there's no restriction or no real world problem in the context, then we're going to assume we're going to connect all these points. Okay, so I'm going to plug in x equals negative 1 right here x equals 0 right here, x equals 1, and then x equals 2 right there. Okay, so here's that right there. Okay, so let's negative 2 times negative 1. A negative times a negative is a positive, so 2 plus 1 is 3. So notice I graphed right here, negative 1, so to the left 1, up 3. So the ordered pair is negative 1, comma 3, so left 1, up 3. This one's easy, 0 plus 1 is, zero, is uh, 1 is 0 plus 1, which is 1. So I'm going to go over 0, up 1. So we'll graph that point right there. Okay, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So over 1, down 1. 
negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Okay, and then negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. All right, so we graph those, and then we'll go ahead and connect those because there's no restrictions on this problem. So if, it, if there's no restrictions about, you know, x having to be whole numbers, then go ahead and connect those guys. All right, you guys, I hope that lesson makes some sense, and take care.